Hello, this is Maggie. This is a follow-up from video 37 in Music Theory for Piano Technicians. Shout out to Francesco for reminding me. Thank you so much. I completely forgot I got so busy. So thanks. Here we go. If you haven't seen that video, watch that video first. This one will make more sense. And I'm going to be talking about how to use a triple octave in tuning. So if, if we, if, if, if these three G's are in tune, and we want to check the next G. We know that our single octave is wide compared to the two to one coincident partials. We know that our double octave is slightly wide at the four to one coincident partials. And we know that our triple octave is slightly narrow at the eight to one coincident partials. So, as we move down, these are very close to pure, very close. So we're gonna sound clean, we're gonna sound clean, we're gonna sound clean. However, if, if our top note is flat, okay, this octave is already wide at a two to one. So if this is slightly flat, it's still gonna sound rather clean. If this is slightly flat here with, with the double octave, which was, was slightly wide, it's still gonna sound a little clean. However, the triple octave was already narrow. So if this note is flat, it's gonna get noisy. It's gonna sound more noisy than the other. We're moving further away from pure. If this is flat, we're closer to pure, closer to pure, but now we're further away from pure. So if it sounds clean, clean, noisy, and we know these three are right, or we're, we're pretty sure, then we know that that is flat. However, the other direction, if this is sharp, then our narrow triple octave will, if this is sharp, it'll be closer to pure, and this triple octave will be very clean. The two to one still might be pretty clean, because it wasn't as wide, but it, it might be a little bit. But then our single octave will definitely be more noisy. So if we do the same check, if we do this and it's noisy and it gets cleaner as we move down, then we know this note is sharp. And I'm gonna say the same is true for here, and since this might be easier to hear in the video, I'm gonna move this one, this G. My somer gets a little wonky in here, so I'm, I'm not sure how this is gonna work yet, because I didn't try it first. Actually, let me see if I can get this to sound in the video first. Let me move this one. So here we have, I got my pin on the right lever, we have Okay, I'm gonna tune listening to this. I'm gonna flatten it. Actually, no, I'm not. There's just not enough sustain. I'm definitely flat, so let's see what happens. It's noisier, it's very subtle. Actually, quiet. Now I'm gonna raise it sharp. Then I'll do it with this one. That's too sharp probably, but let me listen anyway. That's very clean. I think it went flat again. Let me pull it up. Too sharp. That's very noisy. Very noisy. Still kind of noisy. Interesting. Oh, it fell again. No, it didn't. Interesting. It's hard to hear, but it can be done. All right, so let's go where I can hear a little bit better. So here we have... clean. Okay. I'm going to lower this G. Okay. So here we have, now let's listen again. Little noise. Oh, listen to that. That's beating. Okay. Let me pull this up to be clean down here and see what we get. 
I'm pulling it sharp. And come back down. Let's see what we have now. Oh, listen to that, noisy. So I'm sharp, I'm sharp. Yeah, big time. Oh, too much. Well, but see, it's less noisy here. Less noisy, more noisy. It's sharp. So that's how you use that tool. I hope that was good information for some people. I'm going to have to go back and listen to my video because it always sounds different on the video. I'm curious to see if I can hear it better on the video because sometimes you can. So if you like my channel, please subscribe, like this video. Thank you so much, Francesco, for reminding me to do this. And happy tuning. Bye.